All right, in this video, I'm gonna walk us through some terms and concepts that are important to talk about and to understand while we're discussing physical health. So physical health traditionally might have been understood as your physical body being um, free of disease or disability. But as uh, we, our healthcare has improved and people have started living longer and living with many different conditions, this definition has really evolved to reflect that. So now our definition of physical health might be more focused on being able to live comfortably, to do the things that you want to do. And this is important not only for aging populations, but also because a variety of different body types and sizes and shapes are not defined as unhealthy just based on their bodies. So a more accurate definition of physical health could be the ability to perform daily tasks and live comfortably in your body doing the things that you want and need to do. And it's important to recognize that physical health is influenced by things like your levels of physical activity, getting adequate nutrition, as well as adequate rest, as well as both our physical and social environments that enable us to do things and also prevent or constrain us from doing other things. So within this definition um, and within the literature and the different resources regarding physical health, there's lots of terms that often come up and are repeated. So I just wanna take us through some of these terms now so we understand exactly what they mean. First up, we'll often see resources refer to morbidity and mortality. So morbidity is the condition of being diseased or of having a disease. And mortality refers to this um, of being subject to death or dying. So for example, you can express mortality rates of people with a disease. Both of these terms are typically expressed as a rate within a population. So for example, we might say that morbidity rates increased as a certain type of resource decreased within a population. So for example, morbidity rates increased as healthcare services within a community decreased. Mortality rates, on the other hand, we could say that mortality rates of people with type 2 diabetes increased as access to treatment for that disease decreased. When we're referring to some of our activity terms, it's also important to distinguish and use terms that refer to exactly what we want to say. So first up, we have physical activity. And physical activity refers to any form of bodily movement. So that's important to recognize because physical activity isn't only leisure time activity, and it isn't only exercise that happens in places like gyms or fitness facilities. You can engage in physical activity as part of work or as part of transportation, getting to and from work or to and from home, as well as leisure time physical activity as a social activity with friends and family. Exercise, on the other hand, is planned and purposeful physical activity that is done with the goal of improving your health or fitness. So things like going to the gym or going for a run, going for a bike ride with the purpose of getting fitter or feeling healthier. Fitness, finally, is a set of attributes um, that we can measure and that are typically associated with being healthy or being skilled. So fitness is a very broad topic and it can mean a lot of different things. In this picture here, we see Shaq standing beside Simone Biles. Both of these people are relatively fit. Um, they're both high level athletes, but as you can see, they look very different and clearly perform very different types of tasks as, as part of their athletic roles. This doesn't mean that they're either of them are more fit than the other, 
just that they are different types of fit. So I'm going to take us through a few components of fitness, and this is a very broad kind of conceptualization, but it's commonly used in literature and resources that you'll see. So fitness can be broken down into these five components. First, we have cardiorespiratory fitness, or the ability to engage in aerobic exercise over a long period of time, where our body uses oxygen and allows us to continue at a relatively um, low level of exertion. We have muscular strength, which is your ability to move a large load or exert a lot of force over a short period of time. Muscular endurance, on the other hand, is the ability to move a, a somewhat of a load, but over a longer period of time. Flexibility is our muscles and joints ability to move and bend um, throughout the range of motion. And finally, body composition is the relative amounts of muscles, fat, and structural components within our bodies. So all of these components can be measured and used in different ways to reflect people's level of fitness. So for example, in the previous slide, the body composition and flexibility of these two individuals is quite different, but it doesn't mean that they're not both fit in their own way. Now in using physical activity to improve fitness, there's different ways that you can classify or categorize um, this activity. A very common one is what we call the FIT principle. So FIT is an acronym that stands for frequency, intensity, time, and type. And it's a way of recording and classifying physical activity and categorizing it according to these terms. So frequency being how often we do it. So is it daily? Is it twice a week? Is it once a month? Intensity is how hard the exercise is or um, what level of exertion we put into it. Time is for how long you'll do it. So 10 minutes or two hours. And type is what is the type of exercise. So what is it doing? Doing Is it static movements um, or is it free, free flow running or playing as part of a, a game? So finally, to illustrate the way these can be used, I just want to provide an example and then walk through the ways that some of this terminology can be used. So for example, the Canadian Centre for Exercise Physiology recommends that children accumulate at least 60 minutes of moderate to vis vigorous physical activity per day. This should include a variety of aerobic or cardiovascular activities, as well as muscle strengthening activities at least three times per week. So to begin, let's look at the activity terms. Here we see physical activity, meaning that this group is not recommending people do specific exercises, but just that they are moving and engaging in bodily movement. We also see the use of aerobic or cardiovascular activities, meaning training our cardiovascular fitness as well as muscle strengthening activities for muscle strength and muscle endurance. Finally, with regard to the FIT principles, we see they suggest that we should engage in 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity per day. So we have both the frequency and the time there, as well as the muscle strengthening activities at least three times per week. So we see the frequency as well. So these are just some of the terms that you will see in the physical health literature and resources, but it's a good start to get us thinking about the importance of these terms and how we can apply them. Consider this as you move forward and read through some of these resources and how certain information is presented within that text.